Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm finally going to be doing a follow up slash review slash installation tips video all about the deep heat projector. Now if you missed my last two videos on it, the first one I was installing the projector, the second video I was explaining the technology behind it, since there were a lot of people that were worried that my gecko wouldn't get like the belly heat it gets from a heat mat or just people didn't quite understand the technology. So if you have similar questions or queries about this particular piece of equipment, then please check out that video first. But first, let's quickly answer some frequently asked questions. Number one, can you use this on a terrarium with a mesh lid? Yes, you can. I've actually used this for a long time with my Crystal Gecko on top of her terrarium. It's actually easier to install as you don't have to get a little fitting and screw it into your vivarium. You literally just place it on top in something like this and you don't need to buy a guard or a cage like you would in a vivarium. The second question, do you need to use your heat mat in the warm hide as well as the deep heat projector? No, you don't. Mine is turned off. All I'm using is the deep heat projector. And as I explained in the previous video, the deep heat projector kind of creates its own heat mat. The third question is, does it produce any visible light? Nope, so when I was filming this, and usually when I film this, I have the UV light on, so that's the light you see, but the heater itself, only at full power, it will produce a glow that's under four lux, which will not affect your reptile's day-night cycle. However, since it's only set at like 30, 32 degrees Celsius, as you can see, there's no glow or light at all. And finally, is it available outside the UK? Yes, it is. I always link online shops where you can find the Arcadia products in the description down below. As I know, I use them a lot. I talk about them a lot. And a lot of you guys feel you can't actually get them when you can. So that's why I link them below. So there we have it, your questions answered. Now on to some installation tips. So I know a lot of people were eager to try this, which is awesome. However, I do have some tips to ensure your install is safe and effective. So first, make sure you are using a dimming thermostat. Without a thermostat, this can quickly overheat. And for the product to work correctly and have a longer life, ideally you want a dimming thermostat. I will admit I still use a pulse one with my crested gecko, but if you want this product to last longer and everything, use a dimming one. The next tip is you can use this with fake hides. For example, the rock background in Ziggy's tank isn't real rock. I think it's resin. However, if you are thinking I might use rock, I might use slate to build an area or a hide, then go for that um, because slate and rock will retain and readmit heat better than a fake hide. So if you were thinking of doing that anyway, go for it. Another thing to consider is if you're using a UV light as well as a projector, make sure there's a safe distance between where the gecko will be laying to heat up and the UV light. So for example, I use a shade dweller, so there needs to be about 10 to 12 inches between the UV light and the gecko at basking. Also, put the heater and the UV light on the same side of the tank as combined, they're meant to act as the sun. And if you think your gecko or any type of reptile that may use this can reach the heater, use a guard or a cage. If you saw my install video, you can see why we didn't use it. But if you think there's that risk, then definitely use it. Uh, make sure you monitor the system at all times with a thermometer with a probe, as well as a laser thermometer as they could be more precise. And the final tip, pop the thermostat probe about an inch outside the diameter of the heater. In short, this is because the thermostat probe is black and will therefore absorb heat quicker and may shut down your system too early. For example, if you set the thermostat at 30 degrees Celsius, it may think the area has reached that temperature when in fact it may only be 27 or 28 degrees Celsius. This may seem weird, you may not even think about it, but actually if you think of something that's black on a hot sunny day, that gets a lot hotter than anything else. So just keep that in mind. A lot of people ask me about that, but that is why I did it. Um, but yeah, those were my tips for installing a deep heat projector. So finally, how did Ziggy get on with the heater? Would I recommend it? And will I be using it with my other leopard geckos? So for the first day and a half of using this, Ziggy stayed in her cold hide, which I kind of expected. However, I installed this on Thursday afternoon and by the Saturday night, she was led out under the heater. Now for the next week, maybe two weeks, she would hide in her cave on her cold side during the day and at night she'd 
sploot out under the heater. But eventually she got more and more confident and now I can find her laying there in the morning, during the day and at night. Now as I explained in a previous video, she doesn't have to spend as much time under the heater like she would on a heat mat. So as much as she will lay underneath it, she also does move around her tank a lot. She also frequently walks up her background and lays on her fake rocks up there since they're nice and warm. So it's really nice to just sort of see Ziggy use the entirety of her tank, whereas before she would literally lay in a warm hide all day and night unless she needed to go to the toilet or she wanted food. Now one thing I will say is the heater is quite drying, which, you know, is understandable. So it is important to spray down the tank before a shed unless you do have a specific moist or humid hide. The substrate I use, ideally you should spray that down occasionally, so I do do that. But when I see Ziggy is literally about to shed, I give the tank a good spray down on one side. And since using this heater, she has had two extremely successful sheds, like not even a single scale left behind. Now, I know one thing people were concerned about was there wouldn't be much of a temperature gradient and that for some reason they thought the cold hide wouldn't be cooler than a warm hide. I'm not sure where they got that from. But as you can see, the cold side is cooler and even deep in the caves it gets cooler. So there's a lot of variation for my gecko to warm up and cool down like it would in the wild. Like the underside of the rocks are also nice and warm, which I imagine radiates down a little bit but there are still places where she can easily go and cool down rather than a sort of six by 11 inch heated patch on the floor and the rest of the tank being room temperature like you'd get with a heat mat. So I definitely think the deep heat projector produces a far better temperature gradient. So would I recommend this heater and will I be using it with my other geckos? Yes. It's like, both of those questions. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen such a difference in Ziggy. She's far more active. This is far more natural. And I see her so much more now. Like, you know, when you see the gecko in a sploot position, the other day I was watching her and she was in her normal position and I saw her little legs go back. And it's like, I never get to see that when she's in her cave, but I see it now all the time. And yeah, I just, I can't wait to use this with my other geckos. I feel like... Mini will get it next and Gizmo and Diego might have to wait a while just because if you saw how I installed the lamp in Ziggy's tank I don't think that'd be possible to do in Gizmo and Diego's as they have things above their tank So we may have to wait a while with that But one thing I found interesting is Ziggy actually feels stronger like her grip is so strong now and I think it's because the heater goes deep in the muscle tissue and actually energizes the reptile so it'd be interesting to see if that happens to my other geckos or maybe like Ziggy just got really really beefy. I also feel like now if I wanted to I could do a bioactive tank without much issue. Before I didn't have a drainage layer, I didn't really know how I'd put a drainage layer in and also have a heat mat, whereas now it just makes, it's, makes it so much easier. But I will say that I intend on doing more bioactive tanks and stuff with my leopard geckos when I have more room because I do want to upgrade their tanks and have bigger tanks and maybe do full-on bioactive tanks for them but sadly I'm still waiting to move out if you've ever looked at house prices in England it's depressing so um <laughs> those plans have to be put on hold for the moment but if I had the space and the money it would look like a zoo in here not because I'd have tons of like pets just because they'd have ridiculously lavish like enclosures but yeah um <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed today's video i hope this has answered some of your questions as i said if you do have more questions about how this works please check out my last video if you haven't already please subscribe but thank you for watching guys and goodbye